Book of Nehemiah, starting in chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaleh, And it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the twentieth year, as I was in the shush in the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, and he and certain men of Judah, and I came, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also was broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, and thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter, abroad, scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though they were you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by the, <clears throat> by the great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive unto to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants, who desire to fear thy name. And prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes, and the king, and that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? There is nothing else but sorrow of heart, and I was thus very sore afraid. And I said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates are ever consumed with fire? And the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And, le and a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which are appertained to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. And then I came to the governors beyond the river, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When Sembalat the Horonite, the Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me. And I was told I and a man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, and I saved the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, into the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate, to the gate of the fountain, to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then I went I up in the night by the brook, and viewed the wall, and turned back, and entered by the gate of the valley, and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went, or what I did. None had I yet, as yet told, it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did work. And I said, then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more reproached. And I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sembel at the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite, and Geshem the Ara Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us, and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? And answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us, therefore we his servants will arise and build. Ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priest, and they built it up the sheep gate. They sanctified it, and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mia, they sanctified it, unto the tower of Hananiel. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and to next to them builded Zechar the son of Emery. But the fish gate that the sons of Hassanah built.
who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Cuz. And next unto them repaired Meshulam, the son of Barakiah, the son of Meshizabil, excuse me. And next unto them repaired Zedek, the son of Bana. And next unto them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Paseah, and Meshulam, the son of Besodia. They laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Melatiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Maranathite, the men of Gibeon, and of Mizpah, under the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Heriah, of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. And they fortified Jerusalem under the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Repahiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. Next unto them repaired Jediah, the son of Harampa, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hattush, the son of Hashabinah. Malkijah, the son of Haram, and Hashab, the son of Pathamoah, repaired the other piece in the tower of the furnaces. And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halahesh, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. The valley gate repaired Hanum, and the inhabitants of Zenoah. They built it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall unto the dung gate. But the dung gate repaired Mount. <clears throat> Excuse me, Malchiah, the son of Rechab, the ruler of part of Beth Karim. Beth Hakarim, he built it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. But the gate of the fountain repaired Shelon, the son of Kolhoza, the ruler of the part of Mizpah. He built it and covered it, set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Siloah by the king's garden, and unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, the ruler of the half part of Bethzer, unto the place over against the sepulchres of David, and to the pool that was made and of the house of the mighty. After him repaired the Levites, Rehum the son of Bani. Next unto him repaired Hashabiah, the ruler of the half part of Kila, on his part. After him repaired their brethren, Babai the son of Henadad, the ruler of the half part of Kila. And next to him repaired Ezer the son of Jeshua, the ruler of Mizpah, another piece over against the going up to the armory and the turning of the wall. After him Barak the son of Zebai earnestly repaired the other piece from the turning of the wall into the door of the house of Eliashib the high priest. After him repaired Merimeth, the son of Urijah, the son of Cuz, another piece, from the door of the house of Eliashib, even to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him repaired the priests, the men of the plain. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashib over against their house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Masiah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. After him repaired Benui, the son of Hanadad, another piece, from the house of Azariah, under the turning of the wall, even under the corner. Palal the son of Uzai over against the turning of the wall, in the tower which lieth out from King's High House, High House, excuse me, that was by the court of the prison. After him, Pedadiah the son of Parash. Moreover, the Nethinims dwelt in Ophel, under the place over against the water gate toward the east, and the tower that lieth out. After them, the Tekoites repaired another piece, over against the great tower that lieth out, even under the wall of Ophel. From above the horse gate repaired the priest, every one over against his house. After them repaired Zedek the son of Immer over against his house. After him repaired also Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hananiah, the son of Shalamiah, and the Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaf, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, over against his chamber. After him repaired Malchiah, the goldsmith's son unto the place of Nethanims, and of the merchants over against the gate Mikpot, Mipkot, excuse me, into the going up the corner. And between the going up of the corner under the sheep gate repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. <clears throat> but it came to pass that when Sembalot heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make the, an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they built, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass, that when Sambalot, and Tobiah, and the Arabians, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth, and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem, and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. 
And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They shall not know. Neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto, unto us ten times, From all places whence ye whence shall return, unto us that will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even said the people after the families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked, and rose up, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth, that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which built it on the wall, and they that bare burdens, with those that laid it, every one with, uh, with one of his hands, wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so built it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising in the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, Let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us, and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put them off for washing. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against the brethren of the Jews. For there were that said, We are sons, and our daughters are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the dearth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money from the king's tribute, for the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already, neither is yet in our neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their crying these words. Then I consulted with myself and rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, Ye exact usury every one of his brother. And I said a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. Also I said, It is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? I likewise and my brethren, and my servants, might exact them of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them. Even this day their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, and also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, the oil, that ye exact of them. And said they, We will restore them, and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake ev out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. If it thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the twentieth year, even unto the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that is twelve years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people, and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over people. But so did not I, because of the fear of God. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. Neither bought we any land. All my servants were gathered thither under the work. Moreover, there were at my table an hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, beside those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep, also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine, yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor, because the bondage was upon heavy upon this people. Think upon me, God, excuse me, think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people.